Okay, good evening and uh, welcome to the 497th meeting of the Penfield Historic Preservation Board. Um, this is Tom Combs speaking. I'm the chairman and I'll call the meeting to order. Um, why don't we first dispense with the approval of minutes from the February meeting. Uh, could I have a motion? So moved and in a second. Any uh, comments, edits, changes that anybody saw necessary? Okay, all in favor of approval of the minutes? Aye. Okay, that's unanimous, thank you. Um, a couple of quick introductions. We have some visitors with us today. Uh, Eric Tate is with us, the director of Penfield's uh, Department of Public Works, and, and uh, Eric is responsible for the entire infrastructure of the town. Just a, a little, little bit of stuff here and there. Um, and uh, part of that responsibility includes the, uh, the lodges at the parks, uh, of which the, um, what ultimately happens at Shadow Pines is part of that. So thank you for coming. Uh, we also have Jennifer Ahrens, who is with uh, Barrow Architects, and Andrew Hart, who's with Bergman, and they are the, the team that's responsible for uh, the work that's going to be done at Shadow Pines, and we'll, we'll get to them later. Uh, first agenda items is, uh, is something that uh, relates to a conversation that we started in the last meeting. And uh, out of that discussion, we thought that we should take a review of the criteria that we have in our code for um, determining when to agree to uh, an application for a certificate of appropriateness. And uh, on the screen now, and, and I think you all have a paper copy of it, is, uh, is exactly what is, uh, is in, in the... Uh, the town code, uh, and it's with the wording slightly changed, which uh, uh, appreciate Sharon has gone to, to uh, the trouble of, of making it a little more uh, readable for the flow of this discussion. Um, and also thank her for uh, providing us with the documents, similar documents from, uh, from other towns, uh, which interestingly enough, if you had a chance to read them, they're virtually verbatim uh, all across all the towns. And honestly, that didn't surprise me a bit because we're all doing the same things. We all have the same set of goals. And more than likely, decades ago, people talked to each other and they said, could I borrow your, your document and, and make it part of our new one? Um, so if, if, you, if you take a look at the screen or a piece of paper, whichever is, is simpler, and we'll just walk through them. Uh, there, uh, the, the way Shannon did this, they're in the form of a question for us to say, yes, we agree, uh, we'd think it needs to be changed or, or, uh, or whatever. So the first one in looking at a, a, uh, an application is the, alter, it's the alteration of the existing property compatible with their historic character and the surrounding properties. Um, Seems pretty pretty straightforward. Any any comments, questions about that? Okay, we'll scoot down to the next one. Does the property contribute to the character of the district? Are the historic features retained and altered as little as possible? I think reasonable questions to be asked of an application. Um, Anything, anything to be noted there? Sounds right. Okay. Is the new construction compatible with other properties in the district? Now that the new construction, we have, we've have had a couple of, um, I guess they're not new anymore, but uh, new buildings that, that were built along five mile line and I don't remember the guts of those conversations, but um, you know they're obviously new. They don't they don't fit in with any old structures. I think new construction would also include things like additions. Um, if you're adding or enclosing a porch, if you're adding a shed, a pool, anything that's new to the property. Yes, uh -huh, for yeah. sure. Well, um, but additions have to be compatible with the house. Well, 
right. to which that addition is built. This question is about other buildings on Correct, the property. Correct, right. And then that's in the next one with principles of compatibility for that. Yep. Yeah, so we have had uh, new construction off the back side of a house a few years back. Um, but, you know, we, we've had those from time to time. Um, okay, principles of compatibility. In general design, character, appropriateness of the proposed alteration or new construction. That's sort of a repeat, in a way, of, the, of earlier on. Um, scale and size of proposed alteration or new construction in relation to the property. I think that would be an important thing to, to look at. If uh, I don't recall it ever having come up. Mike, you're an old timer like me. Do you remember any uh, anything like that? But it certainly makes sense if if, if a, a change to a property is going to uh, to look out of place uh, relative to the the rest of the district. Uh, texture, materials, and color, and their relation to similar features of other properties in the district. And this is what brought to mind, Chuck, what you brought up last week, um, specific to um, whether we would allow uh, vinyl siding versus uh, versus wooden clapboard. So this is this is something that, that we would have to take into account, uh, maybe a little more than we have in the past, but at least to to, answer, to ask the questions and and get the discussion out on the table. Um, yeah, I think it would be appropriate. I mean, um, thinking about last month's application, at least having um, investigated what the cost was for more material appropriate for the, the structure than just replacing vinyl siding. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the cost differences would have been, but it would have been good to know. And if yeah. it was a sizable difference, then obviously, you know, we would try to work with the yeah. property owner. And that's something that I can start asking um, applicants to include in their application if that's something that you guys would like to see um, is, you know, um, an estimate for both options um, so that you guys can weigh in as well as the homeowner. And maybe it would be eye opening for the homeowner that it's not that much of a cost difference or it's a drastic cost difference, yeah. but we don't know that without an estimate. Yes, thank you, because I was going to ask you to do that. Perfect. Um, be because um, otherwise it, it just adds another month to... Right, We we it holds up us and the resident. Yeah, so if they're prepared when they come in with that information, mm -hmm. uh, that would be very useful. Um, visual compatibility with surrounding properties, uh, including proportion, which we just talked about a little bit, of, from of the front proportion and arrangement of shutters, windows, and other openings, roof shape, and the rhythm of the spacing of other properties on the streets, including setbacks. Now, the word rhythm threw me a little bit, but um, I guess it's just the, the general how, how do things sort mm -hmm. of fit together. Mm -hmm. um, and that all makes sense to me. Any, any comments? No, that's good. Okay. Um, and the importance of historic, architectural, or other features to the significance <coughs> of the property. And that, uh, that also seems to make sense. Um, um, and so, uh, if we are talking about new construction, so how could we have historic features if are you talking about the same thing as uh, in the paragraph before for visual compatibility I think that uh, the way I read that mirror was that uh, it, if someone was wanted to make a change or an alteration to um, to a feature that, that did have historic value that we thought did um, the, we, we should be aware of it and then and, and speak to it. But, okay, so this is not specific to new construction or addition? 
No, this would be for for anything. Right. This is compat. This is these are principles the principles of compatibility, of compatibility that's for everything for all applications. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. So they might not apply to every project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and that might be true of any number of these. Uh, you know, we we have some that are pretty straightforward. Uh, change of paint color or something like that. That we wouldn't need to go through all of this. Um, mm -hmm. Tom, I was wondering if we could take, this is a good list, if we could take this list into the a form of a checklist that could be part of our review process that it would stick with the application, that would go with that application, that would kind of force us to, on the board to go back, go down this list and put a check mark and, and look at each question to see how the project fits into the Sure, reservation. I think that's a good idea. Document how we how we come to it, it would do that. It would yeah. also remind us that you know this is what what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, but I wonder if another point to be added ought to be um, the financial feasibility, because I mean it's easy to say that the, the applicant last month that wanted to put side, vinyl siding on it's easy to say well we don't want that. But when you find out there's a thirty thousand yeah. dollar difference and he, they don't have the money doesn't make any sense to well yeah you know, and it, so it's got to be a factor not the most important factor but it's got to be part of it no I agree it, as soon as we as soon as you raise a question of the of the materials it, it puts the responsibility on us to to make that decision if you will but um, it, it, maybe it would also give us an opportunity at that time to steer them towards any kind of grant money or um, yeah. might be out there for preservation mm -hmm. um, I the the first let's take those two suggestions uh, the first one just with respect to, to using this as a checklist which I think is a great idea is uh, any comments or disagreements with that can I think it's our responsibility to, to do that so I think what I can do, it's not necessarily put the questions in the application because then we get the resident's opinion on these questions when we really need the board member's opinions. But what I can do is send, when they fill out the application as a secondary page, I can include these questions and say, these are the topics and questions that the board will be reviewing for your project. So keep that in mind when applying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Guidelines for them as well as you guys. Yeah, I think that's a good way. Maybe we would put a, I don't know, a points value to each question, and then you've got to get it so many. I'm just trying to think of a way to make it fair. I mean, we want, and we'll go back to the vinyl siding question. We want that to be something more historically correct, but they may not want to spend the money. Yeah. So there's got to be a, a balance that if we if we had a priority list of, of those questions and each question was worth so many points or something then and then you could I don't know come to a, a resolution that might be good for both parties because otherwise everybody's just going to say well I don't have the money and we got to say well it's more important to have the historical correctness than the money mm -hmm. you know so I think it's got to be everything's got to be prioritized yeah, I'm not sure about the, um, like. Can you, can you stop people? Can you say, we want this, and they say they're not going to be money, they're going to go to and go ahead and do it. Can you stop them from doing it? So there is hardship criteria. Okay. Yep, I was, <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> there is hardship criteria in the code, which would mean that if the board denied an application and the homeowner said, I can't afford to do it the way that you want me to do it, there's an appeal process basically. So they apply for this hardship appeal. And then I'm trying to look at the code right now as because I haven't had to deal with this, so I'm not overly familiar with it. I just know it exists. Um, but basically, um, we would hold a public hearing um, and then the applicant um, can consult the board and local preservation groups and interested parties, it says, um, to seek an alternative that will result in the preservation of the property. So basically, if 
it, they are, you guys are well within your right to deny them even if they can't financially afford to do it the way that you guys want them to. And then we go through this appeal process. I've never had to do it, so I don't know exactly what that entails, but. We, we, we've never done that in at least the last two decades here. Seems to me we don't open Pandora's box. Be a big fight, be a big argument. Well, it, it, it could well be, but. I think it depends on how strongly you guys feel about something. If you feel like something is very important that needs to be preserved and the homeowner just doesn't want to do it and says that they can't afford it, what's the line that you let them go ahead with the project or you say you really can't do this, it's important? Yeah. Uh, you know, in uh, Town of Barrington, the last paragraph here uh, is about special considerations for existing building. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good paragraph uh, to adopt. Where, where is that, Mira? On the back. Yeah, the very last bullet um, that I included from the town of Parrington, this is in their code. It says, special considerations for existing buildings. For existing buildings, the Historic Architecture Commission shall consider the availability of materials, technology, and craftsmanship to du duplicate existing styles, patterns, textures, and overall detailing. When several acceptable alternatives are appropriate, costs may be considered by the Historic Architecture Commission. Yeah, the commission is the term, that's the term that's used in the town of Parenton, if I recall. So. Right, that's what they use uh, instead of the term board. I, I think that's a, that's a good suggestion, too. And that is something that if you guys feel like fits in what you would like to have for the criteria, it's something that we could possibly amend our code to include. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about that? Let's see some. I like it. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a, a little bit of a workaround for the hardship. It's still, mm -hmm. the hardship portion is still in our code, but this gives you guys a little bit more leeway as far as the financial aspect of it and maybe coming to a, um, you know, a compromise instead of this way or that way, something mm -hmm. that meets in the middle that makes everybody happy. Yeah, I think. That I think that's a good idea. I don't think we need, well, do we need to vote on that if it's going to be a change of code? Um, I think I have to present it. I have to talk to Carrie Ivers, and then I'll have to present it to the town board. Um, so I don't know what your process is in that. I'll have to check. Okay. But I'll keep you guys posted. I'll get the, the background work going on it. All right. Uh, going back to your two suggestions, Chuck. And now I'm forgetting what the first one was. <laughs> <laughs> the checklist. <laughs> well, the, the checklist I wasn't sure about because for somebody who just wants a change of paint color, then, then you know, you've got checks and scores for, well, the check mark, I'm sorry, I, I, that was a good idea, but the scoring of them I thought would be a little bit complicated and it wouldn't make sense for a lot of the types of things that we've seen. So what I was getting at was a way to prioritize well, I guess a way to balance it, like if you're scoring an RFP for something, you think um, cost may be your most important factor or um, put that into terms of something historical that we might look at, we might decide that wood, wood, we don't want vinyl windows, so we want original wood windows and we'll, we'll score that a little bit. That'll be more important in our decision, whereas maybe we don't care what, as much what color the house is, so painting a house may may not be as important of a factor and then you get that all up and you have a score and it's just a way to i thought it would just be a way to balance things out a little bit so that the important things get way heavier in the decisions than the less important things do yeah yeah and probably doesn't make any sense well you no know, it, it makes sense because I've, I've i've been through things like that where you, you have that kind of a, a scoring rubric and but i guess what i'm thinking is this person that just wants to change your color at the house, what, how are you going to score all those other things that don't even apply? Well, you wouldn't. I'd go back to your, your earlier comment that not, it wouldn't apply to, you know, everything. So, yeah. I think the other issue that I, that I think of immediately is that different people are going to have different priorities. So not everyone would kind of have the same scoring rubric and then maybe people would feel more strongly about something in one project versus another it's i think it's a little difficult to put a blanket over it 
Well, I think we'd be doing the scoring as the board. Right, that's what I mean. But each board member, I think, might have different priorities. And what they subjective well, in terms of each person. Can right. we table yeah. this and discuss it? Uh, have a separate discussion about that? Yes, we can. We can have a separate discussion about it. I think the 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 um, uh, the checklist. I think we're all agreeing is mm -hmm. a good idea. And I can bring up this list of questions every time we have an application and talk through it at yeah. the meeting, so that we have better documentation about your guys's exact feelings and opinions on the project. Right. Um, so I think that's a good starting point, and see how that goes, maybe. All right. And then go from there. At least think about it between this meeting and next. All right. So in in the meantime, we'll, we we all agree on the checklist, and then you'll that last paragraph. Mm -hmm. We'll figure out how we add that to the the code. What yep. the procedure I'll is see, to do that. Yeah, I'll try and figure out the process and get that going to adopt it to our own code. Okay. Um, now, just just below that, uh, uh, if we want to carry this discussion on further. Uh, Jen has put in the uh, that additional detail that the town of Parenton had. Uh, does anyone feel we need to go through that list um, to see if there's anything that's... Uh, you know, I, I scanned through that list and this is pretty much detailing what uh, we had under one of ours, uh, visual compatibility with surrounding properties. I felt the same way when, when I looked at it. It, mm -hmm. it just goes through a lower level of detail. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when it's uh, so detailed, it makes it very difficult to design something and prove that it's, uh, uh, it fits the, uh, uh, it, it fits the, uh, the principle, yeah. rather than when you have it in more uh, general mm -hmm. statement. All right. Well, not hearing a lot of excitement to go through it, um, <laughs> then we will. We we won't do that. We have people waiting. <laughs> okay. Um, then uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is the uh, the Clark House, and. Uh, I thought we'd kick this off with maybe a, a comment from um, Mr. Hart. Maybe you could join us up front here. And um, and you're with Bergman Architects, and um, maybe you could just give us a, a a minute on what your role is, and then how your role uh, dovetails with what uh, Jennifer from Barrow Architects. Sure, the, uh, the town has hired Bergman to uh, redesign or to design the new facility for the, um, for the lodge that's gonna be at, at the park and behind the Clark House uh, and attached to the Clark House. So as part of that project, we want to um, rehabilitate the Clark House. So in order for us to do that, we needed to get an expert in preservation, and that's why we hired uh, Barrow to help us with that part of the project. So they will help us in um, creating the construction documents, providing specifications on uh, how to treat windows, siding, what materials to select, the roof material, uh, all the items associated with the Clark House itself to rehabilitate it, uh, while the rest of our team will work on the new building that's mm -hmm. going to the north of the of the uh, yeah. facility. So can we assume that you've uh, been through the house? And yes, several times. So you know, you know what, uh, what Jennifer is up against, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, okay. I was working closely with Steve, the former project manager, uh, before he left Bergman, so I'm very familiar with the project. Yeah. Um, so, but, and I'm taking over for him since he left. Well, good. Um, on the screen, uh, Shannon's going to pull up a, a bunch of... Uh, a list of things for us to go through, which I think came from from Jennifer. Uh, I I generated it, but we we worked on it together during um, a walkthrough, um, and then I created the presentation, and then um, Andrew, um, Jennifer, and uh, Colleen from Bergman all looked through it and made sure that they were comfortable with it before I showed it to everyone here. So they just had a few small edits, but 
it's just about the same as the one that I sent you all. Okay. Great. Well, we'll, we'll go through it and, uh, and comment. I, I think it's probably fair to say that this is sort of a first blush uh, until you get in there and take some walls down and whatever. Uh, you probably discover a few a few other things that uh, that need to be worked on. But. Great. Okay. Um, so I started by including um, the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, um, just based on our overall kind of walkthrough of the project and decisions that everybody has made so far. Rehabilitation is the best uh, category for the treatment of the goal of the 1832 portion that we're saving of the Clark House. Um, so I just included that as kind of a reference point for everybody. But then you should be also thinking about the criteria that we just went over when making some of these decisions on what to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so that was more of just a reference point. Um, and then using a um, National Park Service brief, I kind of went through to identify the, um, the character defining features. So you start with the overall and then move into the closer range. So that's just kind of me walking through how I determine the character defining features. Um, so then the overall visual aspect, same thing, just going into more detail. Um, so we talk about the setting, the shape, the roof, projections, openings, and materials. Um, I don't need to walk through every single one because we're kind of going to go go into that. And same thing, just visual character at close range, color and texture. So the character defining features that I identified are the right side porch, the green shutters, the white clapboard siding, the accentuated front door, the pediment and col columns of the front entry porch with side lights and panel door, uh, double hung sash windows, and the window configuration of the symmetrical balance front facade. So I did find a couple of these <coughs> old historic photos. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find dates on them. I was hoping Kathy would be here to kind of give us an idea. Um, they're taken from roughly the same angle, so they don't provide too much information for us between the two. Um, the only reason that you can even really tell that they're from a different time period uh, is because of the growth of the foliage around it. Mm -hmm. um, but just some reference points of what is there today is pretty much the same as what's in these couple historic photos. And then moving forward, so I kind of go point by point um, for each character defining feature. Starting with the right side porch, I kind of did an overview and then um, a more detailed view of uh, the condition. So some rotting wood, some missing pieces of the floor, chipping paint, um, you know, some issues maybe with the gutter um, and the roof there. Um, the shutters, some of them are kind of falling apart. A um, few panels missing in a couple of them, um, obviously chipping paint, um, some of the hardware kind of falling off or missing. Uh, the clapboard siding, there's a few portions where um, <coughs> sections have been removed and replaced with just um, uh, just some pieces of, of plywood. plywood. Yeah. Yep. Um, and just some piece, uh, there's a piece missing off the back that hasn't been filled in. Um, it's just a closer look of the <coughs> siding there. Um, and then the entry porch, um, we can assume that it was enclosed at some point. It was at one point just the columns and the pediment. Someone kind of added these, these little sides in the windows here. Um, the condition, you know, the whole thing is kind of sagging and um, obviously a lot of chip paint, a lot of rotting wood. Um, the foundation, we've talked about this pretty extensively. Um, there's a lot of water damage, places that have been replaced um, kind of with just concrete block, um, areas that have just been filled in as necessary over time. Um, the accentuated front door, obviously one from the front view here, you know, you really, your attention is really pulled to the front door there because it's jumping out at you a little bit more than the rest of the recessed building all on one plane. Um, we had the wood windows. Um, we did look at them. They're all in fairly good condition that they could be uh, repaired instead of having to be replaced. 
Um, and then the symmetrical front facade is significant, you know, creates balance. Um, the chimney, which is something that we've talked about previously, at the back of the house, um, from all of our research, we can assume it's not original. We're not exactly sure when it was added, um, but obviously it's not in the best condition. Um, you know, it's got some, some issues there. Um, the front light fixtures on either side of the front door, um, broken and, you know, a little falling apart there. Um, and then the items to discuss. So I think probably from here, if you guys want to take over and go point by point, I can kind of go back up into the photo so you can see as we are walking through each um, bullet point here. Um, any comments or questions yeah. before we get into that? Okay, well, let's let's jump into it. Let's start. Okay. Um, now, did, did, did this list change from the one you sent up? I just add, and nothing was removed. I just added a couple um, extra bullets. Um, I think I just just added. What did I add? Just a couple extra little pieces of information. Nothing significant. More of just clarification on a couple things. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, let's let's go let's go through them. Um, one by one, the, the chimney being first. Um, I think we had talked about this and, and we, we don't think it should be torn down. Uh, well, the, when we talked about it, uh, we posed the question when the chimney was installed, was it original or not, right? And that's why we didn't want it torn down. But now we have to decide which period we uh, designate as a period of significance uh, before the chimney was added or after the chimney was added? Well, uh, we, we don't know when it was built. Um, I, I went down there today to look at it again, and I think it's significantly older than the chimney that's on the extension of the house based on the amount of decay to the bricks and to the pointing. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a different, although it's, it sort of looks like the chimney that's that's on the, the, the expansion, but it's not. Somebody it's not the same. Right oh. I was just going to say, um, actually, in talking to Jennifer earlier today, um, well, we don't know for sure. Um, she had some kind of opinions and thoughts on the the age and the condition of the chimney as well that may I be helpful for this, to ask, for this group. I was just about to ask you, did you do any research on that? And yeah, yes, of course, photos tell the total truth, right? And we don't have photos. So unfortunately, we can just try to make observations and then educated um, assumptions from that. So uh, we were in the basement um, about a year ago with Eric and then again about a month ago. And you know that the um, stone, the original field stone, and the, you can see where the east chimney was and, the, or, and that was taken down over time and then that porch put on. So that we assume that um, that was an original chimney to the structure. Um, I would think any um, chimney that was constructed at the time of construction of the 1832 would have been the field stone construction. Um, and what le leads me to think that or assume um, observe that I believe that this chimney is um, more in line with the 1932 addition for a couple reasons. One, it's the same, um, it's the brick material um, versus a stone. Also, when you look at the floor plan, it shares the flue of the corner chimney um, of the room that's inside the 1932. So it not only services the um, original Clark House, but it services the corner um, chimney of, or the corner fireplace in the dining room that's of the 1932 edition. Then I look at the detailing of the corbeline as it goes up high. It matches the corbeline of the chimney that's on the east elevation of the 1932. So, and um, coloration of the brick. They all sort of lead me to, to, to make the assumption that that chimney is um, poss 
probably more with the 1932 construction would be my assumption. Um, the chimney is not in good condition. Um, it is different than the east chimney, and I'm sorry I don't know what's venting anything, but the type of damage that I see on that chimney is um, leads me to think it's like from condensation of the flue that went through. Maybe there were cracks, um, or it wasn't lined properly. So over time, um, that with the venting and maybe the cap is not real good. Um, that the condensation that's caused ca then caused the brick face to spall off, and the um, you can see in the paint damage. And then the other thing I noticed, it's hard to tell, but the, um, it has to be rebuilt at the top there, um, the bricks um, coming apart. Now, I do want to say that having to be rebuilt is, is not a reason why you would, it's repairable, right? It's just a, that's not a reason to say, oh, just tear it down, or a reason to say keep it. But um, I think the, the, the fact that I would assume that it's um, more of the 1930s vintage, then um, that should help maybe guide how you make the decision on the chimney. Is my phone, my microphone's not even on. Oh, it's on. It, it's on, it's okay. on. It's on. Given that, uh, we'll, we'll assume you're right. Um, then we have the decision, do we think it's worth keeping for its appearance or um, then if, if it's gone, you've got an old house with no apparent way to, for, for anyone to warm it or, or cook or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I want to just say two things. One, um, and we talked to Shannon about this, but it isn't visible from Clark or Wayland um, Road. Um, but I think uh, more importantly is um, from listening to her and watching you on videos, you know, saving the historic material. So I feel like the, if it were a field stone or from the original building, that that's a priority that you have. Um, so those are kind of two things that can also be used to help you guide maybe how you look at it. Is that a functional chimney? Eric, we don't think so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, we're, it's not currently. Um, I don't know if it was being used um, by the former owners. It's, there's nothing connected or being used with that uh, today. Okay, so with new design, uh, the 1935, 32, uh, part of the building is going to be demolished. Right. Uh, we will have a new building with new mechanical system. Probably there will be new mechanical system in the original building uh, as we restore it. Correct. And and, yeah, Andy. Is, is that the intent? Yeah, the intent is to provide new mechanicals for the existing Clark House. Yeah. Right. So it's separate from separate from the lodge. Separate from right. the yes. So those mechanicals, you will not need a chimney. Most right. like, yeah, we would obviously no. Correct, not uh, that type of chimney anyway. Yes. So uh, back to your question, you know, we said we will have an old house without chimney to vent it. Well, chimney is not functional. Right. Right. So. But I mean, I guess my thinking is it just the look of it. it it would look, to me, it would look odd to have an 1832 house without a chimney. I think the other thing to um, take into consideration, too, is that the most important and, in, I, I don't even want to say important, the most recognizable side of the building is the front. Mm -hmm. And from the front, if you're standing at Whalen or if you're standing on Clark Road, you can't see the chimney unless you're sta standing behind the building. Sure. So I think that's something to take into consideration is, is it important to the front facade? No, because you can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's <coughs> what 
is important to save. It's yeah, and that's uh, a hard decision. It's not so cut and dry. Have you guys looked into where the original chimney in the house might have been when it was built? I think that's what Jennifer yeah. said. It's on the, the west side. It's a, or the east, east, east side. East side. Oh, the east side. East side where they built the, that. Yeah, the, they the built the little porch. They built the porch, and then there's like um, a attics or basement stair that kind of mm -hmm. goes underneath the porch. I think you know that um, is you can see the large. It's a, it's a huge, and you can see where there's the hearth in the um, floor framing. Um, And there's no hearth um, for the oh, other chimney. There's when you're in the basement. There's nothing um, at that north. There's there's no framing changes. And the stone wall is goes right scoots right by it. But so there the, there is a fireplace in in the house. There is a fireplace in the house. Yes, and and I liked your comment about well, what does the <laughs> hearth look like? Um, but the problem I have with looking at anything on the interior is I think everything was just has been done, redone and, and done and redone. So it's really hard to tell from the interior what's original or not, unless, again, we have photos, which we don't have photos. Um, so it's hard to tell from the interior. My guess is the interior is later. It's very colonial. Well, the, I'm pretty sure, 100% sure, that the interiors all been redone at mm -hmm. one time together. So the original chimney would have been an exterior chimney going up on on what side? East. East, East side. <clears throat> why don't we re, Why don't we rebuild? Take the the replacement one down and rebuild a replica of the one where it would have, originally would have been. It would have been a different material, though. The original chimney. So putting up a brick chimney when it was originally field stone would probably look out of place. Yeah, and it's I also going suggesting through making it. And we don't really know what it looked like. I wasn't suggesting doing a brick chimney, although oh. I, I think brick could have been used back then. It would have been made on site probably. Um, but certainly you could rebuild a, a field stone one in that plate, in the place of that would make it more visible and get rid of the the um, 1930s era one. Right. Chuck, but we don't know what the original chimney looked like. How can we rebuild something not knowing what it should look like? It will 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 not know if it's replica. Good question. Yeah, there's there's like misleading things on the Clark House already, and I think that's what you want to avoid. Like that fan light, you know, if you look at the historic photo. Um, it actually, at the gable end, has the same treatment as the west. So somebody put a fan light in there mm -hmm. thinking that that's, oh, looks good and looks appropriate. But it's not what was there before. So it, it can become then misleading. And that's really, I know that's not what you want, want to do. Um, so. No, but I kind of agree with Tom that it would be kind of funny to restore this house and not have a chimney mass that you could, you know, that would fit in with it. Yeah, I think, it would, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I think it would be a different story if we had a photo or painting of the house, which we could show to see what it looked like, you know what I mean? But then to just create something, we have no idea. Um, the material may be the same, but, you know, design of it and um, that's the structure. You know, I, I would hate to be, you wouldn't want to put that on a historic building and just guessing what, you know, could have been there. And in, and in order to do that, you'd have to adjust the existing porch. Oh, it would have to go away. Right. Have to be removed. Yeah, remove it, which is a huge alteration of something that's already there that we do know what it looks like and what it did look like. Yeah, I guess one thing I think Mira said, I think it's important, is like what era do you want to, Put, you know, bring the house back to? Is it going to be a mix of the 30s or are you looking for more of the mid 1800s or more just getting back to the simple structure that it was, you know, the rectangular box? Um, well, that's the $60,000 question because um, the little house, the little room on the west side and the porch on the east side weren't, weren't there originally either. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so let's say if we want to keep the chimney and rebuild it at the top so you know town can 
pay for it, right? Uh, but are there any problems with leaving that chimney in place for for the design of the building? Or is it just money thing? Well, we would just have to relocate. There's a, a new proposed bathroom going there, so we would have to Okay. Redesign that area to accommodate the, uh, the chimney. That's so what that, we'd have to what, do. that design that you had uh, assumed the chimney was gone. Correct. Oh, it's, I don't remember that. Yeah, that's how the chimney discussion came about in the yeah. first place. Is that someone caught that the new design removed the, removed chimney, the chimney, and then someone was like, "Wait, there's a whole chimney in this bathroom, and that's not going to work." So it would either be a redesign or um, remove the chimney. Yeah, so uh, I'm thinking as an architect now, uh, if if it was my project, what would I do? Yeah. Um, I would have an alternate for uh, keeping the chimney and have two, and that would be additional cost, obviously, mm -hmm. and have an option for relocating the bathrooms. Uh, it shouldn't be difficult, you yeah. know. To do like an alternate design, and whenever this project is go goes out to bid, uh, I mean rebuilding this chimney that's you know, easily thirty thousand dollars. Thirty. <clears throat> so it's also it's also again, a non-functional chimney too. So it's yeah. It um, it will have to be rebuilt and then capped at the top. Mm -hmm. I think Tom's question, though, kind of really gets to the crux, like um, what is what is the period of significance that mm -hmm. word you used? And you ha once that's defined, which I think you've already, your decisions have already been aligned, align, been along a line of definition of period of significance is before all the additions were put on, right? Um, and it's the original mass, rectangular mass. And so then I think that you have to kind of go with, along with that in, in your thinking so that you're consistent um, in your thinking. Of course, then you're making assumptions too about things and that you're gonna have to decide if you wanna hang on to those assumptions. Uh, it's not easy. Not no, you're making it real hard on me because, <laughs> because my my assumption is I, I if, if you go back to the pictures that that Jan has put up there of the the most recent they were the oldest ones that we have, I I like the the little room on the one side and the porch mm -hmm. oh, matching yes. on the other mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. I mean that appeals that appeals to me. Yeah, I'm not saying to tear down. Um, to, 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 to rep sort of reconstruct the, we don't want to reconstruct, we don't, I'm not suggesting reconstruction at all, because this is definitely a rehabilitation project, but, um, but now I'm just thinking feature-wise, if you look just specifically at the chimney feature, um, because it's 1932, then, um, assuming that it's 1932 is, is a prob a good assumption or after then it's a then it if you if the project wants to remove it and has a good reason then i think um there's really no clear path of saying that it needs to stay there um does that make sense well it, it makes sense except doesn't doesn't that say then you tear down the extension the room on the one side and the porch on the other side the same line of thinking it's a case i would say it's kind of a case by case basis like when he was talking about having a grading system i think everything comes down to uh weighing weighing the options um there are uses for the east porch and the west the chimney those features are much more visually impactful, especially from the front and the Wayland Street elevations, whereas the chimney doesn't have it. Um, the chimney doesn't have a purpose anymore, and it's on the rear and sides that can't be seen. 
I think a good way to think of it too is the whole point of this is to save the 1832 portion because it's important to Penfield and Penfield residents, right? So if someone were to look at the rehabilitation job when it's complete, they look at it and say, that still looks like the Clark House to me. If we remove the chimney, I think they can still say that. If you remove that small single story addition, if you remove that porch, it's gonna look like a very different house. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, what do we think? Mike? Oh, can you can you talk? <clears throat> if the chimney is not visible from was it Clark Road and Whalen, <laughs> removal I don't think is going to be that big a problem. In terms of, to it seems to me that the front porch and those additions on either side are more important than that chimney. In terms of maintaining the image of the house. Steve Chuck does it. I'm sorry, but it doesn't make sense to pull that front porch off to put another chimney. Is that what you're saying? If you want to put a chimney on the east side? That was one of the suggestions. Yeah. I don't think so. Steve? Um, I guess I, you know, after discussion, I have no problem with removing the, the chimney. Um, you know, my next question is, you know, do you want to remove the two side additions? Um, I know it does have character to it, but... Wouldn't it bring it back more to what structure was um, in the 1800s if those were gone or no? Oh, it would because no. they weren't there. But, but I'll defer to, to Mira. She's the architect. <laughs> um, you know, you don't have to make changes to existing condition if it's in good, if it's in good repair. So we don't buy... Secretary of Interior or any preservation standards, we don't have to change it. We can leave it as is. And as uh, Shannon said, people are used to seeing that, you know, that they add character uh, to the building. So I I don't feel that they have to be removed. Okay, it was just more of a question, you yeah. know, what the appropriate be because direction would be. Yeah, it, it is not restoration. We are in... Uh, uh, it's not reconstruction, we only rehab, Rehab. right? Yes. Right. Rehabilitation. Right. And if you take that porch off, you're not sh sure what was there before. Was it two windows? Was it one window? We don't know because we don't even have a photograph, so. Chuck, any, any comments, opinions? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not married to that chimney where it's at, so I think that's. I would be. I wouldn't be averse to taking that down. All right, we we have a uh, consensus, if not a unanimity, on that question. I guess. Um, so, the chimney's gone. Going once. <laughs> All right. I guess that's our. Our general thought, um, but I don't think that's. A, I don't get the same impression for the, the two side, the, the room on the <coughs> west and the porch on the right. And I can I can at least speak on behalf of uh, previous conversations uh, with the town board. Kind of looking at this, uh, the town board was supportive of you know keeping kind of that room and porch on either side. Um, I guess even though it wasn't. Part of the original 1800s portion, uh, the town board still liked the idea of keeping those from the, I guess, what it looks like today. What did they say about chimney? The uh, chimney was never part of the discussion, and, and I think primarily just because you couldn't see it from the, the road itself. All right, are we okay with the saying let's keep those? I I'm okay. I'm for all it. Right, I think. We're all okay, Chuck. Are you okay? Uh, I don't know. I think I would lean towards taking them off, just to be different. Um, and I still would like the idea of doing some sort of a masonry chimney 
So there is one uh, rebuilding something. Probably could save a little bit of money if you didn't have to re. Because those those that that little room on the porch is not in very good shape anyway. So. Well, we we've got uh, four in favor of keeping them, and and one one for tearing it down. So I think that uh, that says we're accepting keeping them in place. Now I'm kind of getting uh, getting ahead of things here, but with respect to the porch, um, we we need to recognize that there's no entry to the porch from the house from the old house. So that's then it's going to be have it's kind of a standalone um, existence. And I can say, and Andy can certainly chime in as well. The, I guess some of the intent with the, even the proposed addition um, and just the circulation around this property is to actually reconfigure and have the walking trail, you know, where it, Clark, Clark, ah, excuse me, where it crosses uh, Clark Road to actually have that kind of come around and wrap around the, you know, south side in front of the original house and then around this east side. Um, with the option that you know there could be a bench or chairs on this porch for someone to if they wanted to take a break They wanted to sit there, you know get out of the Sun um, That that would be I guess well you wouldn't necessarily walk out of the house or this portion of the house to sit there You know it would still be you know part of the house and, and yeah. an amenity that you know, Residents or visitors um, of the property could utilize mm -hmm. There is a nice old bench built in there too. Yes mm -hmm. Good spot for pictures if someone gets married there too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> once, it's, once it's repaired. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a, a good discussion. I think it'll facilitate going through the rest of it um, more quickly. So move off the, the chimney okay. into the enclosed porch entry. Um, to remain enclosed or restored to the likely original condition of just the, the pediment and the columns. Um, I don't think we need to get into paint color at this point. It's probably premature for that, mm -hmm. but um, opinions on whether the, the porch should be open or, or enclosed. It is pulling away from the house. And I'd rather have it open, I would think. I don't know. It just makes more sense, I guess. And, and I don't know if someone could hide in there for some reason or anything. You know, um, I think it's better open. It's my own opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to agree with that. When you say open, just remove the window, the, the side, yeah, the just walls. To remove just these, the, those walls, these panels, yeah, the side walls and the front side too. lights, right? Yeah, the, front, the, the front, roof would be the two pillars and then the, the pillar. pediment. Yeah, I'm good with that. Sorry, Mike. You, you said you're yeah. you're okay with that. Yeah. Any? All right. That that sounds like unanimity. Okay. The foundation um, uh, options fill the basement. Waterproof the basement from the inside. Improvements to stormwater collection and disposal. Um, I think I'll, I'll look to Andrew here. The, you said there would be separate utilities for the the old house. Correct. Would they be in the basement? We haven't really come up with a final plan on that yet. Um, we do have enough room to provide um, the utilities in the new utility room in the new building. So we could do that. Um, it depends on if we if we have a basement to put something in, well, obviously. That, that was why I asked we could the keep we might be able to still do that as well. Um, since it'll just be the town staff that go down. It won't be open to the public. Um, but that could be an option. If their basement's still there we could still have a, a heat source down there. Yeah. Uh, filling the basement um, did, did that come from you, Jennifer? 
No, I met. I actually am advocating or um, uh, uh, recommending that the basement, the stone wall, is in good condition for a a, a stone wall of that type. Not and and the structural engineer we looked at it. Um, it's basically stormwater management issues. Get the water away from the foundation. And, and in the basement, there's a lot of historic material. The floor framing, you can see the, you know, the cut marks on it. Um, so I, I'd actually um, am recommending um, that the approach um, is to keep, keep the foundation, or keep the basement um, mainly for that, the maintenance of the historic material and to provide a place for a, a little, you know, boiler or something. Um, it's, it's, it's a fine, um, and I think we did talk with Carmen, the structural engineer, and I think you're, you're amenable to that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's important that the um, relationship of the existing grade that you see now at the Clark House um, stay the same. So if you were to do something so invasive as lift the building and pour a slab and set it back down, then the, the relationship of the building change, to the foundation yeah. changes. And I don't think that that's a good... Um, it, since the foundation's in good repair, I think um, that... And I think they also the design team also when we were down there and looking between cobwebs um, I think everyone felt the same way yeah. well my, my view of having a sort of an old house it, that, that a lot of it is grading the the it does fall away on the on all three the east west and south side it falls away from the house so that you ought to be able to to manage the water I would think yes it's all about gutters and downspouts and directly gutters water and away. You know. and <laughs> I, I think part of the, the topic of the foundation was actually uh, and wanted to be you know brought up with this group. So when if you're looking at the front of the 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 house itself or or you know for those of you that have been in the basement, if when you walk down the stairs, if you go to the left and you swing around and you do a one eighty, there's actually a little bit of a dog leg addition onto the basement above and beyond just the current rectangle of the house. The basement itself does an L shape. Um, with that, the portion that extends beyond the footprint of the original house, it's currently under you know, what's kind of the bar room, dining room area. With that portion anticipated to be or expected, planned to be removed, that's where the, I guess the entry to the exterior accessible restrooms would be. So something would need to be done with that portion of that basement foundation, and that was the portion that was, I guess, through the design would be filled in, mm -hmm. um, but wanted to talk to this group about, for the, for the foundation to be able to actually square or, or make that foundation the same rectangle shape as the building, you know, whether it's to use, you know, CMU block, um, and have that come up, you know, even above grade, to, so you could actually see that this is something that's been done different um, and wasn't part of mm -hmm. the original foundation had a different shape. So the L shape was where they, they put a basement under the extent of the addition, a portion of it, yes. That or it was some type of root cellar. Or, yeah. So it's not very big. Um, oh boy, it's bigger than it's expect. bigger than you'd well, think. Yeah, 12 feet at least wide by 14, 15 feet deep, I think. Give or take, yeah. yeah no, that's, that's just about, about the, whole, the whole addition. It was a wine cellar. The what? Wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> so the suggestion would be to fill in that portion. Correct. You're, you're going to need to fill in that We portion. would need yes. to, yeah. yeah. All right, well, that, that, that makes sense, I guess. But then to be able to actually bring that foundation wall back up, you know, do you use CMU block where you can actually see the difference between that and the field stone around the rest of the foundation to differentiate what's original versus what's been yeah. what's been filled in? Why wouldn't you get take the CMU out and replace it with field stone so the whole thing was original? If I'm following it, I don't remember the foundation jog like that, but... Uh. Oh, so, I have a... Um, I, have a I don't have any pictures of it, but 
So Chuck, you're saying re rebuild, rebuild the wall to what it was originally. Well, if I'm understanding it, and I don't remember it, I apologize, but if there's part of the foundation wall that's actually black, why would we not take that out and... It's not, it's a it's hole. not block now, okay. it's... Yeah. It's a hole, basically. Yes. It's demolished. Right. It, was, it was demolished at some point. No, so the, the existing fieldstone foundation is an L shape, despite the rectangular building sitting over top. Oh. So you'd be filling in a portion of that original foundation and then kind of squaring up the back of that wall. I think that kind of begs the question of what was there originally. That's why it's here. Yeah. Right, something we can't answer. It yeah. could have been there originally. They could have had a cellar down there with a flat roof on it. part when you look at the the flooring above because it is in the 19 um, you know 20s edition it's all two buys it's not you know old growth um, you know rough cut wood so really yeah. no way to know what exactly was over that right. you know whether there was some type of you know flat slab over top um, you know or if there was some kind of addition some to the original house that, that, that was falling down yeah 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 it's interesting um, Jennifer, for existing basement, uh, do you advise waterproofing stone from inside? No. No, the, the stone actually is in very good condition. Um, what the issue was, was the water, the storm water, was impacting the sills um, that were sitting on top of the stone um, walls. Um, I always feel like with old historic stone uh, foundation walls, the best thing to do is to ventilate a basement, allow the building to breathe, mm -hmm. and just, um, you know, to how it would have been X, you know, mm -hmm. years ago. Just um, get the storm water away, get, keep your gutters clean, and it will just function. And just make sure you ventilate, especially in the shoulder seasons. Uh, when condensation can happen. And what about the joints? Do they need to be repointed, refilled? N the interior is in very good shape. Okay. I'm spot repointing, yeah. But now I've seen so much worse where you can actually scoop out the sandy mortar, mm -hmm. the mortars, and you don't see a lot of efflorescence mm -hmm. um, or salt buildup. Where you meaning that you can see the water actively kind of mm -hmm. moving behind the wall, you don't see a lot of that. You do see some of it, but that's kind of that is normal and to be expected. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is one window well on the front that wouldn't be original, would it? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. No. I don't believe so. But yeah, I don't even. I I think there's actually two. Yeah, there's two. Um, there's two. Um, one where the current electric service yes. um, and meter is mounted above. The mm -hmm. other is setting there um, or has a sheet of plywood um, with venting for the uh, furnace to actually extend up and out. So those would have to be patched up somewhere along the way. Yeah, yeah. correct. All right, so uh, do are we are we saying don't fill up the mm -hmm. don't fill up the basement? Mm -hmm. um, but then there's this L-shaped portion. We have no choice. We have no choice, really. Is, is that fair to say? Yeah, I don't think the it wasn't intended to, or I guess the discussion wasn't a question whether you fill the entire basement or not. It's just that kind of L-shaped back bump out portion. Yeah. All right, is everyone okay with that? Okay. Um, windows, repair or replace? I, my thought about that was, how bad is it? If, if you can repair it, repair it. If, if it, you can't, then replace it. Yeah, and Jennifer and I looked at them, and they are, they are repairable. But didn't we have a whole... 
when we had that public thing with um, the guy came in to talk about the windows. And mm -hmm. and, um, oh, is that mm -hmm. Steve Jordan came? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was he pro repair? Of course. Well, he, <laughs> he, he better be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what's interesting, um, and I just Andy and I met over there and walked the site before coming to the meeting, and and I didn't, I hadn't looked so closely, but um, the far on the north, the on the east and west elevations, so the the ends, um, the northern windows are replacement. Like they're just uh, they're not double hungs. They're just a single with um, like eight lights to match or nine whatever the light pattern is. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a double hung, but it's not. But it is repairable. And the other thing I noticed was um, that the and I have to check the, the um, what Steve Jordan gave us on Munton size, but the Muntons of the main block of the house are all thicker, which. We'll, can we can put a date to and I and we'll get you a date on that yeah. but the windows on the west elevation the one story match the windows on the 1930 um, those yes, muntins are yeah. thinner and they match the muntins on the 1930s editions so that kind of again correlates yeah. that addition to being um, dating later and yeah. kind of looks like the same window actually mm -hmm. it does look like the same window so yeah, I, I just think we repair, or we just recommend repairing them all. You can then have like this visual of changes that had happened to the Clark House over time, which is kind of a cool. Are there storms? And I would recommend storms for. Are these single glazed windows? They're single glazed oh, windows with storms. exterior storms, okay. yeah. Replace the, and go with a, high, a higher grade um, storm. The Shippo has a couple. Um, storm windows that they they that they always approve on exterior aluminum storms so i'll i'll be you know recommending that in the specification okay um exterior light fixtures any views on that well when the original building was built I don't think they had any lights. <laughs> <laughs> right. We know those aren't original. <laughs> and they're not in very good condition. The one's okay, but the other one's very much so broken. Um, I can't tell. The picture on the right, it doesn't look like there are light fixtures there, but mm. it's so small. Well, I think the, the question isn't necessarily whether we keep them yeah, as opposed to replace. having them at all. Um, I, and I just think of uh, of safety in this day and age. Do you, shouldn't you have lights around yeah, should, any building? You should get lights. Yeah, just something that looks good. Yeah, it's good description. <laughs> <laughs> right, have some options before no, you guys. Over the building. Yeah. Um, any thoughts, team? Have some kind of light and. And have it look good. <laughs> it's a technical term from from Mira. <laughs> um, shutters repair or replace. Um, missing shutters leave as is or replace. How old are the shutters? I mean, they aren't original, I would assume. Oh, um, I don't know. I bet they would. Yeah. They're they they're in both be. of the historic yeah. photos. And again, the, the West Edition has their bigger, different portions than the main Clark House. Mm -hmm. um, are, they, are they hinged in a normal fashion like you'd see in an old, really old yeah. house? Yes. So I'll, I'll bet they're original. At least close to it. Yeah, I don't. Probably not from 1832, I know. but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they'd still be there, <laughs> um, but they, they're historical for sure. I also, if you took away the shutters, the house would look very yeah. different. Oh, yeah. Much different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think we want to have, we need to have shutters. The question of the other windows that don't have them, which I think right. is the, is the east and west upstairs, right? Which they hadn't in the one historic photo. Mm -hmm. 
on the what east and west. Without the fan light. Yeah, no, no fan light in that photo. Yeah, no, no fan light in that mm -hmm. photo, so that must be the older photo. The Can you bring those up, Shannon? Yes. I know I'm flipping around here. Um, okay, yeah, so you can see them on this on this facade. Yeah, sure. There mm -hmm. are shutters over here. Those currently yeah. aren't there. Yeah, so if so I scroll down one, one you can see this is the current one? condition. Yeah, it, it would just be adding, uh, well, there, you said originally there were two on the upstairs. Mm -hmm. You can't see into the downstairs. We can't. But if the porch, I probably don't have them with the porch there. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say, put them on the, mm -hmm. on the the west side. It's only, only two windows. Yeah, this is one of those con things that we actually do have photographic proof that they were there. Yeah. Any concerns with that? Put shutters on the the upstairs windows. All right. Um, the wood clapboard siding repair or replace sections currently covered with plywood. Well, we don't want that. I'll speak for the group on that. <laughs> um, I, I can thoughts? repair. Repair. Replace or uh, plywood. Yeah. Yes. And and maybe some that that doesn't have plywood. Mm -hmm. I think it, is everyone okay with that? Just we we want it to look like a like clapboard. I guess we could ask the question whether we use something like a hardy board that's not wood. No, you don't want to combine wood and hardy board. No, even if it looks the same. Doesn't. The, the, they're probably different thicknesses too. Okay, so that's a repair and and or replace. Uh, the right side porch, repair in kind, put railings on it, paint the color of the floor. Well, we, we, we kicked the color thing down the, down the way. Uh, but repair in kind, I think we're, uh, we were all in favor of keeping it. So then railings, it, uh, I looked to see if there was any sign that there was ever railings on there and it didn't appear there was. No, the historic photos, you can see that there aren't any. It's so low to the ground, it doesn't necessarily need them. And now there wouldn't be access from the inside of the home. So if you put railings up, it's unusable. Um, I assume right now, you know, those planks of wood are there to keep people out. Yeah, to keep to keep people off of that right that porch. Yeah, that's the goal right now. Um, but the historic photos don't show any railings. You can kind of see through the trees there. Okay, that's the end of the list. Unless you had something on your time, I was reading off of my scribbles here. Nope. No, I didn't With have anything extra. I think that was it. Um, just one point on the porch reconstruction. So that roof on that eastern porch, we're going to have to change the configuration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to make sure you, the board was aware of that. Yeah, we've got that little dip where the window. Yeah, we want to make that a hip roof to match the west side. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Were there any other Questions or comments of a general nature or specific to anything that we've talked about tonight? No, we've, we've taken a lot longer than we, we normally do. But. All right, well, hearing nothing, then uh, we can adjourn. Yep, just need a motion. Need a motion, Dr. Pignato. We adjourn. <laughs> a and, second. And a second. All so. right. Great. Thank you, you everybody, second. and thank you to PCTV. Thank you.